take a moment to thank our valued sponsors. John Travis, a financial coach and certified kingdom advisor with Richard Young Associates, a registered investment advisor. We'd also like to thank Sense of Satisfaction by Cricket. And a special thanks goes to Paul H. Bush, the burning bush. Please note that the views and opinions expressed on this show may not necessarily be the views and opinions of our sponsors. And if you would like to sponsor, please reach out. We'd love to have you. It's time to hear the story, make the connection, learn the lesson, and gain the wisdom. Are you ready? Let's get charged and be changed. The Sister Speak Brother Break Show. Conversations on grace, healing, and deliverance. This is Marcy Bush. Come on, let's journey together. And so, he got the oil, laid his hands on me, prayed for me, and declared that by his stripes I'm healed. Now, I've been to all of the local doctors and the doctors in the CSRA and been told the same thing every time on every occasion. I would never be healed. I had a sickness that there was no cure for. It was a blood disorder uh, that I would never be able to regulate. Mm. And so a part of my life was spent like this. My day would go like this. I would wake up and uh, I would feel good about myself just long enough to get to the mirror. I would mm -hmm. look in the mirror and I would see uh, things that was altering my appearance and I would be ashamed. And then I would wonder, second thing I would do is wonder if it would be wise for me to ever try to have a girlfriend mm -hmm. because if she thought I was handsome, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden I start to mm -hmm. manifest in this mm -hmm. sickness, then what's she gonna think? I mean, these are, this was, right. I mean, it was just always something else to defeat mm -hmm. you. And so when Henry prayed for me, <laughs> it was so interesting. A few days went by and I still had the indicators. They were there. Mm -hmm. Nothing looked different about mm -hmm. my body. Nothing seemed different. I felt no different. Mm -hmm. But a few weeks passed and all of a sudden, one day I was walking almost home from the store and I heard a voice say, have you noticed that you haven't been sick or you don't have any pain and you're not, you're not experiencing any joint <laughs> problems and you're not dealing with any kind of blood bleeding out of your, uh, coming out of your skin because the blood would literally like mm. come out of my skin, mm. my pores, no hives, no nothing. Mm. And so um, I said, wow, <laughs> I didn't know it was gone. Mm. Now that is gone, I got to figure out, is it okay to rejoice or do I need to, <laughs> is this thing too good to what? Mm -hmm. To be true. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't have a teacher apart mm -hmm. from, and, and by this, during this time, I don't mean any harm, but the Baptists were literally emphatically teaching there's no such thing as healing mm -hmm. anymore. There's mm -hmm. no such thing, you don't, they're speaking in tongues, it's mm -hmm. done away with. Mm -hmm. No such thing as healing, I never will forget. In fact, they, they were so astute in telling us what we what the Bible no longer taught us, mm. I became more mm. versed in what to not believe than mm -hmm. I did in what to believe. Right. So there was no teaching on faith because all the teaching was difference between our denomination yeah. and others. Mm. But by mm. now, Young Finance has already learned how to stand alone. Okay. He's already learned uh, that there's a possibility that what people are teaching is not true. Okay. So he has to become his own investigator. Okay. And he has to learn the way of righteousness for himself. And listen, I'm telling you one thing to another. I, that was my first miracle. It was personal. The second Okay, miracle, so I know you told us that the first miracle was God healing you. That was the first miracle you witnessed. What what happened after that? What did that light up in you? Well, it triggered a real passion for uh, wanting to see people heal, people delivered. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was something that I 
uh, initiated intentionally. It mm -hmm. just was something that I got involved with mm -hmm. because someone else now believed like I did. Mm -hmm. And so uh, at that time, Pastor Cook, Henry Cook, he was mm -hmm. looking for someone to be a partner with him. And so okay. we would hit the hospitals and we would go in and pray for everybody, believing that everybody's going to be healed. Mm -hmm. And every now and then we got, we saw miracles. Um, remind us about how old were you at this time? I'm still an early teenager now. I'm, okay. I'm, um, I'm probably between from age 14 to 16. Okay. And um, yeah, we, we are just hitting hospitals, convalescent homes. We're having service everywhere. We're doing, uh, we would go to uh, set up at a, in the, in the field near a club and just preach and mm -hmm. and we'd preach till people would come over finally mm -hmm. initially we'd be there alone then okay. before it's over then we got souls coming over and some people come with the beer can and mm -hmm. and and they'd end up putting it down mm -hmm. i remember one day uh a young man was sitting on top of a um at, at a tavern he was sitting on top of a um a drink machine okay a Coke machine in front of the establishment. Mm -hmm. There was a crowd there and I walk up and they're all kind of drinking beer. He's sitting there. This was after one of the Rams baseball games. Mm -hmm. You might know the New Elton Rams mm -hmm. used to play. They were very good. And I walk up and I say to him, I say, while they're laughing, I say to this guy, you're drinking something now that makes you high. But if you come down and listen to what I have to share with you, you get high without having to have any kind of setbacks mm -hmm. or withdrawals. Mm -hmm. And everybody laughed at the guy because he was like joking. He was kicking his feet on the, on the cooler while he was mm -hmm. sitting on top of it. And so they laughed, but he got down. Mm -hmm. And he got down. He challenged me. Mm -hmm. I witnessed to him. The witness turned into... And this was the first time I did this. This is why it's such a notable witness. I'm talking to him and all of a sudden I start telling him his life. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's happening, mm -hmm. but now I don't even realize I'm telling him his life. Mm -hmm. I don't get confirmed until he looks at me and say, what do you say? And I repeat it. Mm -hmm. He said, where'd you get that from? And... I keep talking. He said, ho, 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 where'd you get that from? Mm -hmm. Now, little did I know, hindsight 2020, I'm operating now out of the gift of the word of wisdom mm -hmm. and the word of knowledge. Mm -hmm. I'm discerning his spirit, mm -hmm. doing all three things. And so the more I talked to him, the more it sounded like someone had given me the story of his life, but mm -hmm. he knows that I know nothing about him. Right. In fact, this guy is probably about 20, 25 years older than me. Okay. <laughs> that sets the context. Right. If not at least 15 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. Finally, I say something, and as the people are leaving, a few stay, all guys, he starts to cry. Mm -hmm. It hits the nerve bone of his existence, and from tearing up, he puts his hand on my shoulder. He said, yeah, man, you're going to have to pray for me. Now, we don't know if he's drunk mm -hmm. and crying or whether he has mm -hmm. been affected or right. penetrated right. to a point of conviction mm -hmm. and crying. Mm -hmm. And so he starts crying and I start praying for him. He repeats the prayer, salvation with me, accepts Christ into his heart. Ask me what I teach him. And for the next five weeks, mm -hmm. almost every day, I meet with him at my parents' house mm -hmm. to teach him the scriptures. Mm. And now his family is amazed. Okay. And they are literally astonished that their dad and their husband has gone through this radical change mm -hmm. and that sets the stage for more converts. Okay. And so it starts to snowballing. Mm -hmm. 
I'm still going to the nightclubs. I'm going to the bingo game. I'm preaching outside. We're teaching. We're, and before long, the backyard, my parents' backyard is filled. Now my siblings are there. Now uh, your siblings, some of mm -hmm. them are there. Mm -hmm. And now my first cousins are there. And then members of the choirs from Fort Myers Choir, Fairfield Choir, uh, Zion Fair, Mm -hmm. Runs, Bean mm -hmm. Pond. I mean, all of the churches, Mount Zion, everybody, mm -hmm. everybody's just coming. And so people are having these experiences. And now the next thing happens is uh, I'm praying for folk as if we were in the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit of God falls mm -hmm. and everybody starts speaking in tongues mm -hmm. or prophesying. Mm -hmm. That backyard is lit. Mm -hmm. You're talking about people everywhere. We were from, and I calculated, it was from age 14. The oldest person was uh, 36. Really? So we had a span of people there from ages 14 to 36. And here I was, a young teenager, mm -hmm. directing the prayer meetings and the Bible studies. And I'm telling you, it was enriching. So much so, uh, we had one occasion there uh, one night where my uh, soon-to-be brother-in-law during that time, uh, but not yet, had an, a wreck mm -hmm. um, with um, a vehicle head-on. I'm pulling up just as the, the accident occurs right across mm -hmm. from, I think it was Crosby Barbecue at that time. Mm -hmm. And the car is a mess. The Holy Spirit speaks to me and says, go lay your hand on his head. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm just a young, bold, um, faith-believing, trusting God, little mm -hmm. young guy that ain't got no training, mm -hmm. zealous to, to prove the word of God is true. Mm -hmm. Marcy, I go and lay my hand on his head. I didn't realize at the moment that it was uh, uh, Freddie Roundtree. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I get to him, Part of his brain is hanging out of his head. Mm. Uh, all of his diaphragm is split into, is mm. severed. You could see all of his flesh. He's bust open all the way from uh, all of his leg, all of his side. His, his uh, torso is destroyed, practically annihilated, and all of his um, guts are hanging out. Mm. And I'm standing up there with my hands on his head, mm -hmm. he's fighting for life. Mm -hmm. And all I can hear is the Holy Spirit saying, don't move your hand. Mm -hmm. Now, it didn't make sense to me, but I stood there, mm -hmm. novice, and obeyed. Mm -hmm. The police arrive, the fire truck, everybody comes, the medics, and they say to me, first thing they say to me, it's gonna take the jaws of life to get him out this car. But whatever you are doing is connected to his survival. Mm. Don't move. I literally stand there with my hand on his head until they cut him out the car, get him on the stretcher. And then once they get him prepared to move into the ambulance, then I take my hands off of mm. his head. But now I'm praying for him. Mm hmm. Fast forward back to the yard now. Mm -hmm. Six months later, we're in the backyard having an enriched Bible study, turns into a prayer meeting, turns into supplication, intercessory. All of a sudden, there it is again. Everybody speaking in tongues or prophesying. Mm -hmm. We've taken over the inside and the outside of my parents' house. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit speaks and says, uh, tell your sister to call Freddie's, I think his sister and his mother, and tell them to be at the hospital at a certain time. Mm -hmm. And to the penny, mm -hmm. that specific moment, he said that Freddie was going to rise. Mm -hmm. This is six months after being in a coma for six months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm telling you, Freddie came out of the coma, I think it was either 5.30, 6.30, it was one of them, 5 o'clock, 5.30, I think it was 30, 5.30, 30. But mm -hmm. anyway, he came out of the corner, coma at that precise moment, and they were standing around the bed waiting for him mm. when, he did, when he came out. Mm. Um, 
Uh, Lord. Freddie came out of the coma. I think he was saying my name. I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. I was told he said my name. But when I got to him, he told me that these dreadful creatures from this dreadful region looked like hell. He saw fire. He saw brimstone. He said it was a lot of slime. It was the most dreadful place he's ever seen. Mm -hmm. there, he was being ushered to hell. Mm. And he asked, could he? Um, or it was something about me. Could he something talk to me or whatever? Now, one of the grand, one of the last conversations Fred and I had had prior to that accident was about his need to be saved. So mm -hmm. Fred had left that conversation, called to me, Honest John. Okay. Go, go on, Honest John. You know, he said, you uh -huh. know. So that was a little little, little game we had mm -hmm. in words. And so uh, now all of a sudden, Fred is calling my name because he realized how serious mm -hmm. it was. Yes. And so uh, when Freddie comes out the coma and I get to the hospital, I lead him to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and I'm telling you, they labor with him, they work with him, but God nurtured him back to health yes. from a six month coma and he restored him to where he could walk, he could talk and every, he could do none of that after after those six months. And um, I think during a, a period somewhere in there, I was ministering somewhere and his sister, if I'm not mistaken, had also been diagnosed with cancer. Mm. And I prayed for her and she got delivered from mm. cancer. Um, uh, at around that same time. Not long after that, <clears throat> there was uh, a young lady that was a part of the group. Her name was uh, Joanne uh, Bing mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. And she married a young man named Sonny Lewis. Mm -hmm. um, she was with child and then she miscarried the child in my absence. Okay. They were a part of the group that was affiliated with me. Mm -hmm. There were some of the candidates, the candidates that had gotten converted mm -hmm. through that administration. Mm -hmm. And so I got the phone call that they had rushed her to the hospital. Then I got another phone call, no need to come because she miscarried the child. They're getting ready to do a DNC, so you might as well just stay home. Don't worry about it. We got it. Her family's there, mm -hmm. etc. After I hang up the phone, the Holy Spirit says, go to the hospital and lay your hands on Joanne mm -hmm. and pray for her and tell her that she is going to have a child mm -hmm. regardless to what has been told her. Yes. I get to the hospital because I'm very obedient at this time. Mm hmm. And I run into some people that were oppositional personalities that I know did not want me going in there. You know, mm -hmm. these traditional mindsets, mm -hmm. family mm -hmm. sitting there in the waiting room. Mm -hmm. It's like, here he go. Because mm -hmm. they were already upset that I was, um, I was, I was disturbing the establishment because right. during that time, Baptists did, we did not believe in tongues. Mm -hmm. You can forget about prophecy. Mm -hmm. And God knows, don't tell us that God healing nobody. Right. I look in the room, they kind of look at me as if to say, don't go in her room. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit says, go. Mm -hmm. I look at her husband and say to him, the Holy Spirit said for me to go pray for Joanne. I go in just as they are, the nurses are leaving out. They've completed the DNC. They have affirmed that uh, she'll probably be able to go home in a day or so, that she's no longer pregnant, etc. Mm -hmm. While praying for her, the Holy Spirit says, tell her that she's going to have a baby girl. Now, <laughs> Joanne leaves the hospital and discovers that she is still with child. Mm -hmm. And now there's some things I lost in there. She'd have to tell it. I'm calling her name because it's we have actual accounts of this. Yes. She ends up pregnant throughout the same period that my wife is pregnant, Denise, okay. and they give birth to two girls uh, not far apart. Mm. And everything that was described in the prophets, see, about the daughter and, and, and how the daughter would, because they also said if she had a child, the child, I think it was, she was told that the child would, might be 
um, a handicap or something of that nature mm -hmm. or deformed. No, that child ended up being a beautiful girl. Her name was Tiffany. Mm. And Tiffany grew up and had more children than mm. my daughter, Katina, mm -hmm. and they were the same age. Okay. Yes. So that was a very, very yes. notable miracle yes. as well. But yes. it was just, Marcy, it was one thing after another. So by the time I got really um, uh, right in my relationship with God, I was already convinced that the power of God was present to heal. Mm -hmm. Many times the people could not be healed because they did not know how to make themselves ready for mm -hmm. it. You mm -hmm. know, a lot of it is predicated upon whether you can believe in the source that God uses for transference. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how did you continue? How did you? I know that and I remember at one point um, it was not just in your dad's backyard. But oh, sometimes, grew. yeah, it you went, said we it started was going everywhere. Like Fridays and Saturdays. Fridays and Saturdays. We then it was like a fire that just mm -hmm. caught on. We would start going to. We were down at your dad's house. Mm -hmm. We were every. Reverend all of a Hardin's, sudden now, Reverend Hardens. Reverend Hard. Oh my God, the Hardens were yeah. tremendous assets. Yeah. So we went. We went to the uh, Mamie Dunbar's, uh, mm -hmm. uh, John uh, Harden, um, Clarence Bush. Uh, we went all over the place, man. Mm -hmm. there were, we went at we were at Four Mile. We were literally on Saturday nights. The Bible, the uh, the um, choir practice. choir practice would turn mm -hmm. into real service. Mm -hmm. We would literally walk around New Ellington. Mm -hmm. The streets were just in, just littered with youths. I mean, ages from fourteen to thirty six. We're singing. I mean, I'm t and, but nobody told us to hush because boy, we could sing. We mm -hmm. you talking about? Mm -hmm. We had so many gifted voices, yeah. and we were just anointed. Yeah. And to do what we did and we were fervent in it. And when I tell you that we impacted the entirety of New Ellington, I'm mm -hmm. telling you that was a transformation age and period that we experienced. It was electric mm -hmm. because it was anointed. Nobody, it was no big eyes, no little use. Mm -hmm. It was, we made churches mesh. Mm -hmm. We made churches lose their identity, except those who fought us. We had, boy, we, but we encountered some fighting. Finest yes. Bush Jr. Now, all of a sudden, I'm beginning to see as I ascend in age from teen to young adult mm -hmm. why God allowed me to face the internal trauma and the external distortions mm -hmm. I endured as a young person. I had to develop the capacity of aloneness, mm -hmm. the ability to obey God while standing alone because nobody else might not see it. Yes. Like God said. It. Yes. And I, I was a child, so I was probably nine, 10 around that time. I, not at the beginning, but I know I was 10 when I told my mama and daddy, I wanted to join the church. Well, I wanted to join the church, not because I had been in church my whole life, but because I would overhear mm. Beck oh, and then wow. Beck and Hammond would come home and talk about all the stuff that God did. And she was on fire. And, and that is what. I never will forget. One night we were praying. And for those who don't know, Beck was, Rebecca, Beck was my sister. Rebecca was your sister. Very endearing to me. Very, very special. She was an anointed gift of God. I loved her so, so much. Mm -hmm. We were like siblings to each other. Mm -hmm. Beck was, and I was praying one night. Me, Beck, Pam. Um, it may have been one more person. But I, I know the three of us were really fervent. Mm -hmm. And we were praying. And Beck said, ah. Uh, Oh, she grabbed my hand. She said, she said, she called me June. She said, June, June, the Lord's telling me, watch this, to go get Paul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then she said, can we have, can we, can we have this if I can get permission from dad? Can we have this, the next one at our parents' backyard? Mm -hmm. I said, sure. Mm -hmm. And there it was. Mm -hmm. We were there, mm -hmm. and here comes Paul. Mm -hmm. And I never will forget, because I can see uh, the dust of night in the orange of light 
uh, that almost looked like Twilight as we were there on that Saturday night. Sound like I'm rhyming. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, I can get colorful sometimes as, <laughs> as an artist. But I see, as we're praying, I see all that unfold mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've never been the same. Right. I, and I... I believe I remember that I remember us preparing. I remember the yard, make sure the yard was cut, make sure. And like I said, I was probably around nine, ten because then Hammond caught on fire too. He Paul is Hammond. Paul is Hammond, yeah. Hammond caught on fire too. And I would overhear him and Big, overhear him and Big. And this one time, I remember hearing him and I'm like, oh, I wanted it. It was at that young age. It was age, contagious, Marcy. I wanted it. And I remember then, because I wasn't allowed to go everywhere. Like I said, I'm nine or ten. I wasn't allowed. And by this time, like I said, the buzz became it. it but it became intimidating. I don't, for lack of a better term. Yeah. It became intimidating to those who had been established. Yeah. In oh, those certain oh, things, and so now <laughs> here comes the backlash. The opposition was yes. at finest. Yes. Thanks so much for joining us today. If you've been blessed by today's show, feel free to let us know. And if you'd like to sow into this ministry, become a sponsor or contact us. You can reach us at 803 221 0169, or you can email us at the SSBB show at gmail.com. Let's continue this journey together. Missed any of our past episodes? The pain that I've gone through, I've been through lots. <laughs> Depression, perversion, low self-esteem, rejection. But I'm here and I'm loving life and I'm changed forever. I'm trying to maim you to leave you like to physically and mentally I, maim you or he wanted your life. I don't think he so much wanted my life is that he wanted some results. He wanted me to stay in the earth and not be who I am now. He's where you start talking about it was your love walk. Yes. <laughs> um, we had an opportunity to not only share our experience but find out that there were so many women in the room who has similar experience. What advice would you give to people who find themselves in the grips of grief right now? Um, the pain is inevitable, but the suffering is optional. You were still mm. sick, you still weren't well, but did something change for you when they gave it a name? Yes, because um, once they put a label on it, I felt like it was putting a label on me. Mm. Catch up on past shows on my YouTube channel at Marcy Bush, M-A-R-C-E-Y-B-U-S-H. And be sure to subscribe so you won't miss any future episodes.